No, I say step four. No, I say step four, character development. Uh, so, I said part of it is you write the character profile. We are still in step four, right. Now, a, someone that is, uh, somebody that is selling, uh, what do they call this thing? Elewa. In your play, beans. Somebody that is an Elewa seller in your story, a character. Elewa. Elewa. The person selling Elewa. Uh, 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 Ewa, it's a lewa. Okay. All right. So the lewa is not expected to speak like the a graduate of Oxford University in your script. Am I correct? Now, when you have a village elder speaking and every line he says is sound Oxford English, it's either the, you want to create a character that's really schooled, but it's in the village. But if it's a native doctor, and the native doctor that has been in the village, and you hear him speaking, uh, your constituency wishes to, uh, uh, for your predisposition to committing fraud because ah, something is te terribly wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? Bring, give him a language that can be identifiable with his status in your play. If it is pigeon, good. If it is mixing some, uh, are you getting what I'm saying? You don't make him. You're, you can lose the audience by giving a character, a diction that is either too up there or does not fit the person's status. So character profile helps you do that. Then step five. In this, sorry, still under this character development, it helps you do what? Get the background of the characters, their experiences, their motivations, some things that drive them, some things that, is this person motivated by money? Is this somebody that sees money and jumps and the... Uh, then it helps you do what again? The character acts, the, how the character goes and unwinds as the story goes on. Then it helps to establish relationship and dynamics between the characters. Relationships. This person is this person's husband. This person is this person's friend. Character profile helps you do that. Then the next one is outline. That's the plot outline. You now write the plot outline. Plot outline. Normally, when you write the plot outline, there's always a major plot and a subordinate plot. Sometimes you may have a so two or three. Eh? This is number five. Outline, plot outline. The major plot is the major one that drives the story. Then it's always good to have subordinate. That's a, another key, another way of putting plot is like eh, the framework of the story, the foundation, the kind of the bone. The skeletal st structure of the story that drives the story. Eh? You can the major plot, then subordinate plots. Subordinate plots are other plots that help. Uh -huh, other plots that help boost the major one. You watch some some films, you'll be surprised. This guy is a, a graduate of so and so university, and you now have another family that are having inter, um, marital problem. You now be wondering what is the connection, but along the line, you see everything tie up. Are you getting it? Those subordinate plots will help make the whole film concrete, have weight. It's not always, it's not even good at all to have a story just run one plot, vroom, like that to the end. Let some other things come up to give it a kind of versatility. And uh, that is how life is now. If you start going to Moe now from here, it is not one bike ride that you see on the road. Am I correct? You will see bikes. You will see what again? Vehicles. Tanker. There are many things you see. What do they form up? Your trip to Moe. Your trip to Moe. In the process, there are other things. The Okada man, man may even stop and say, I'm no longer going. Find your way. That's part of your lesson. But when you set out to Moe, you were thinking you'll go on a stretch ride. Things might happen to give it another direction that is how stories should go your story should not be what predictable people should not just predict your story the direction is going surprise twist should be set in right then we have the next stage scene breakdown after break your scene down scene by scene 
your story, break it down scene by scene, specify the locations, locations, specify what the characters present and still part of what you have to think about is in picking your story think of the setting what do i mean by setting setting is is this story situated in modern day lagos is this situated in jerusalem when jesus was on earth is this situated in ancient rome i don't know where i get what i mean setting what is the time of day what are the people like how do they behave sir you wanted to say something No, I was. I just explained the plot outline, and then I moved to scene breakdown. Uh, that's the scene breakdown. All right. So, scene as in S C E N E. Then script writing proper. Step seven. You now start drafting. Start writing the script based on your outline. And scene breakdown. You capture the essence of each scene. Write your dialogue, and in writing your dialogue, consider diction of the different characters. Diction of the different characters. Then write the dialogue, write the actions and the descriptions. Then try to fine-tune your dialogue, that is dialogue refinement, a little bit of polishing, to ensure that it is authentic and makes the right impact. What do I mean by the right, right impact? That is where connotation comes in. Connotation comes in. Now, how many of you know this? I might say, leave my office now. Leave my office now. And I'm raising my voice. It's common in Nollywood. Do you know that it will not make the same impact with a man that looks at you like this and say, wrote me, you may go. You may leave. Do you know that this you may leave is stronger than shouting, leave my office now. How many of you know? Wrote me, you may leave. Are, are you getting it? Uh, but right now, we in describing this, you might you might need to put in also in your writing that with his face blunt, with a blunt face, with a cold face, in a with a cold voice, a cold, emotionless voice, he tells him, "You may leave my office now." In a flat way tells him that that will help the actor know how to deliver and help the director direct properly are you getting what i'm saying in other words you are doing a cardinal job you are guiding the actor you are guiding the director you are guiding the technical uh, team script is the framework for everything is the blueprint of everything that is going to happen in the production are we okay up to that level All right so then after this first draft you can now talk about the review the final draft polishing and then you are good to go so for now that is where i will pause for a while so that my yoga can make one or two inputs and without do one or two practical things but the good thing is what and what i say some very key things in writing think of what very what similitude very similitude, the level of believability of my story. How true to life is my story? Can this fly? That's another way. A, another way of saying it. Can this story fly? Is it something that somebody will say, tell it to the dogs? It's not realistic. I don't know whether you watched any story that was like, this is not, ah, no, now. Um, we are not that stupid. Have you watched any story like that? Why? Because very similitude was low, very low. God bless you. Let's welcome Pastor Ronti. Can we welcome Pastor Ronti? Well done, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Please, let's clap for him. He has given us vital tips on how to write a good story, write a good script. But looking around, I discovered that few people were not writing. And I'm prompted to ask, who are the people that genuinely want to be script writers? Who are the people, if you genuinely want to be a script writer? May I see your hands up? You really want to be a script writer? Okay, so it's understandable now why some people 
were not writing or why some people were not really paying attention. Because script writing is a profession. It's something that must, you must have passion for it. You must have passion for it. If you don't have passion for it, you'll not be able to write it. That is it. And those, that is the side I want, I want us to look at right now. For you to be a script writer, you must know that you have to be a good communicator. You have to be a good communicator. And when we are talking about communication, it's not just you standing and talking, talking, talking. You must be able to talk and somebody there must understand what you are saying. We have people that are writing, but they are not all communicating. Or when they are communicating, they are not communicating to everyone. Uh, there was a senator in the House, I think it was during uh, Jonathan or so. What is the name of that senator that gives a uh, big, big grammar? Uh -huh. That is, a, I think his name is uh, Obayagbo or something like that. He, he was from a do state. Yes, thank you. The man will speak, trying to impress people with big grammar. But at the end of the day, the people he's talking to will not understand anything. Also, we have writers like that. I don't know how many of you have read uh, works of Professor Wale Shoyinka. Lion and the Jewel. Was that difficult to understand? That is even one of the Yes, one of the simple ones that you can come about, Lion and the Jewel, Trials of Brother Jero, and stuff like that. But when you move to uh, the Kings and the Horseman, I'm telling you not all of you will understand it. Which takes us to another level. When you are writing, you should ask yourself, who is your audience? Who is your audience? Because the reason you, are, you, are, you want to write at all is because you have a message. Have a message for the world, so, so, so. And what is the message? The message is that you should believe and be saved or whatever. You have a message. If you don't have a message, you, have, you don't have any business writing. And if you have a message, you should have somebody that you are passing the message across to. When Pastor was talking, he said, usually when he sees a play and he starts with uh, uh, emblems of Christianity and all that, it definitely cuts some people off. So which means you may be writing for unbelievers and at times you may be writing for people who are even saved already. For instance, when you have a theme like something like he who is standing should be careful lest you fall. You think you are standing now. You believe you are a believer. And God said that judgment will start in the church. So you want to talk to the people in the church. The kind of thing you'll be passing across to them will be different from what you'll be passing across to people who don't even know Christ at all. So you must have a message. Then you must define your audience. Another thing is that to be a good script writer, you must love writing. You must love writing. You must acquire that writing skill. You must just love writing. If you are the type who doesn't love writing, well, you may as well. Either you start getting yourself acquainted with that, or you just know that maybe you go to acting or something like that. Maybe that is why some people are saying, OK, they don't want to uh, write. So you need to know how to write very well. And again, you need also to know something that when you write, it is not everybody that the thing will appeal to immediately. And because of that, some people will criticize you. When they criticize you, if you are the weak type, you go back, you cry, and stop writing. You don't want to write again because somebody criticized you. As a writer, script writer, you must grow thick skin to criticism. Because if everybody loves what you are doing, everybody loves what you are writing, then there's a problem. 
some people will see something that is still wrong or something that they, they don't agree with. That is their opinion. It doesn't mean that their opinion is superior to yours. So you need to have that. And before that, you yourself need that self-appraiser. Appraise yourself. This thing that I've written, is it right? That is why you cannot write a script just once. You write, you edit, you write, you edit, you write, you edit. At times you tear papers and all that. So you need to get ready for that. I'm telling you this because soon we're going to go into writing now. This thing is a workshop, not a talk shop. We'll go into writing now. And what you want to do, you have been told things to look for and things to do. Now, we want to start by writing a story. Uh, I was told that you are going to write stories. Then we'll have a script from it. The four groups will have their scripts. And then we'll produce. And then choose the best. But the script can come from any of you. The script that will win can come from any of you. So this is the time for you to think now. What story do you want to write? What story do you want to write? So you need to give us a storyline. He has already told you. Think of it. Come with your idea and all that. We are starting right in the class now. Not something you go to hostel and come back and say. Start what I believe that by the time you were coming, something was in your mind that, okay, I want to. Or if nothing was there, right now, think of something. What is the theme you want to work on? You want to talk about Holiness, as he has talked, said before, you want to talk about divorce, you want to talk about uh, unforgiveness, you want, just look for one thing you want to talk about. I'm giving those ones because we are in the Christendom now. If it was in the world, you could choose any other theme. But I'm saying, look through the stories in the Bible and whatever, and think of what you want to do. For instance, people think that the Bible it's just there, and the characters in the Bible cannot be used again. I'll tell you this. When uh, we wrote uh, What Shall Separate Us, has any of you watched that? What Shall Separate Us? Okay. That was the uh, movie that we produced for, I think, 2010 convention. When the idea came, uh, we were told that we needed to get somebody who went through trials serious temptations and everything. And at the end of the day, he came out triumphantly. Uh, two of us were chosen to write. Uh, the story, we were given the story of that man. I don't know, I, I believe some of you would have seen it. That man that doesn't have arms, doesn't have leg, but he's a motivator. They'll put him on the table and he'll be talking. Yes, that was the story we were given. And two of us were to write. So now, like what he, was, uh, he told us before, believability. Now, can we still get that kind of character now? How do we do all the amputation and all that and still get something or somebody that is that much incapacitated? So I said, okay, let me look at the Bible and see what character can we get that went through trials and all that. So I picked Job. Job. But if you look at that uh, movie, you will not see the life of Job. But you will see the things that Job went through. All the trials at the point he was supposed to cause God. That the wife said, cause God and die and, all, and die and all those things. The wife antagonized him. The caretaker antagonized him. You know, all the antagonism came. But he stood steadfast. So, don't limit yourself. Look around you because inspiration will come. There's nothing new under the sun. We talk about creativity. It's not as if you are going to bring an idea that uh, nothing has happened before. No. From the existing thing, the only thing is that now you are going to twist it around or change something about it to make it your own. Then it becomes original. It becomes something that no one has done before. But it is one of those things that you are seeing now. So let's look at it. What character comes to you? If you think of Joseph, for instance, what comes to your mind? Joseph in the Bible, what comes to your mind? What theme can you derive from that? 
if you think of Judas, what can I mean? What comes to your mind? People have portrayed Judas in different ways. Uh, somebody said, "Oh, Judas is just a betrayer." This, 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 and and some other people said, "No, Judas came to fulfill what God said he should do. That his purpose is to betray and all that." Now, you look at it. What does Judas tell you? What can you take away from that character? Just look at different things like that. I'm just trying to let you see how you can come up with your theme easily. We are trying to brainstorm now. So look at different things, but don't restrict yourself to the Bible. You can also look at what is happening in homes. What are the things happening in homes? Why do we have so, a, a high rate of divorce these days? Why do we have it? Is it because people don't consult God before they get their wives? Or what is the thing? Just think of it, then come up with your theme. Look at the way the theme of unforgiveness was handled by uh, Ma uh, Mount Zion uh, Ministry in Akpotieri. Or well, you don't know that Akpotieri was talking about unforgiveness? Has anybody watched Akpotieri? Akpotieri. If not, you've watched it. Did you see unforgiveness there? If you have the opportunity to watch it, you see it. Because the theme is there now. You can see it anyway since you've not watched it. But what I'm trying to say is look around you. Look at the Bible. Any material that can give you inspiration. Because we are writing for the church, our inspiration should come from God. That is why as a script writer in the Christendom, you are not an entertainer. You are a minister. You are a minister. Just as pastors stand on the pulpit and preach, that is what you are also doing. You are preaching to people. You are ministering to them. You are not out there to entertain. That is why at times I, I, I get to see some gospel, this thing, and I see that what people are concerned about is making people laugh. And I say, is that the thing? Because most of the time when you pay, make people laugh, they laugh and forget the message. But if you can make them sit, think, and become sober, it becomes easy for them to repent. So also think about that. Think about what you can give. So without wasting our time, let's just, let's just do that. Let's go into brainstorming. Think of it. Take some time to brainstorm. What is the story you want to tell? And make sure your story wins. Don't worry, this is the first draft. It may not be perfect now. Let's write. If we need to uh, rewrite, we'll do it. S -s you said? We can give you the next uh, five, ten minutes to write. Everybody should write. You said? As long as your story. But a story like normally it shouldn't be more than just one page. You just want to give us something like synopsis. Maybe one page or one and a half because you are using small, small paper. Just give us so that we can see. We want to have a feel of it. Yes. The yes, just the story. Just the story now. You know, it, gives you it gave you steps. After the story, we'll go into breaking it down into scenes, sequence, and all those things. So let's start. Or do, do we have any question? In fact, sorry, questions both on this and what he gave you before. Do we have any questions before we go into the writing? Questions? So everything is well understood. Okay, so let's, let's start writing. Let's write. Yeah. 